To play football, he lives in the house there. I can take you to the house where I grew up, where I was raised. That's where all the, this is the Badger pub, where all the boys used to hang out behind the pub. Probably say I know about everyone on this road, you know. This is where we used to go up and be naughty. See these little garages behind there. My mum. And dad came here from Nigeria when they was about 20. Worked really hard, built themselves up, and then this is where I was brought up. This is what we use as a goal. My sister was a good goalkeeper. I'd use her in goal, I'd take shots. Most of the time, I'd find myself on the other side of that fence, getting up to mischief, setting fires. You know what it's like when you're young. You see what they've done though, they've cut the they've cut the barbed wire off so they can climb over. <laughs> Still got it, G. I had some really good friends in the far corner. Luckily he, he used to have a quad bike, he'll bring out a little 50cc around here, it weren't too noisy. Jerry Hallowell's best friend's grandma lived there, so she used to pop over and come see her. So I met Jerry Hallowell a few times. You know, it was a really nice area. Summer days, just used to come out here and eat your, eat your dinner. This is it, this is the pub. See, you can walk all the way across without falling off. When you're younger, you can go out, but you're not allowed to leave the coldy sack. So we had to make sure we had enough equipment to keep us occupied for the day. We used to climb this tree. Now I'm this big, this tree don't look that big to me. But when I was about this height, this tree was, was something that I'd only find in the Amazon. This looked to me like acres, acres of land. But now I'm this big, it just looks so small. My name is Anthony Olua Femi Olasheni Joshua. In Watford, I was known as Femi. My parents moved to London, so I wanted to stay in Watford, because obviously that's where my heart's been and that's where my heart's at. I'm, I'm a loyal character. So um, instead of moving to London, I could either have declared myself homeless, but I went down the route of trying to get into a hostel. I used to see my friends that were about a year older, two years older than me, coming around in courses with exhaust pipes, booming, booming sound systems, and there's me on, on a pedal bike. So I wanted to follow in their footsteps, and, you know, I, I got caught up in some of the wrong things. It doesn't take a long time for things to happen. You know, time goes quick and a lot can happen. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't a long time, but a lot went a lot went on, and now I look back on it. If I'd have taken advice from my parents that have been there, lived life, I may have done things a lot easier. We used to have about 20 of my boys in here playing playing the PlayStation, betting on Fight Night, NBA. Then another 20 would turn up. They would all just be chilling downstairs. You know the guys that used to want to go outside and have a cigarette or something like that. You just used to go out here. I used to have a massive bull mastiff as well that used to live with me. They used to run around in the garden and stuff like that. And yeah, this is how we used to live, really. But this is this, this was the spot. This is where the massive TV was, and this is where the games went down. This was the gaming room. Then they've now installed a camera, because <laughs> they probably heard about all the mischief we used to get up to.
I had to relocate to London to get away from all the trouble because uh, a lot of the police banned me from the district for a year. I was on tag for about 13 months, so a long time. I had to be home at 7.30 every night. It taught me discipline, it taught me a routine I never had. I had to go and sign on at the station three times a week. I had a regimented lifestyle for 13 months and in that time, um, I knew that I wanted to put on some size. I wanted to go back to my area looking a lot bigger, a lot stronger, because I wanted to uh, maintain that level of respect I had. I started lifting weights and my cousin Benga, he brought me down to Finch ABC, trying to keep me occupied. And, and I went and bought some boots when he lent me some money and I, I got involved. Ben Alimi is Joshua's cousin. He, he, he sort of like first introduced Joshua to the gym because he'd come before him. And he said, why don't you come boxing, Josh? And then sort of like, that was it. Once you, once you, if, if it's in you and you come, you ain't never going to get it out of you. And that's, I think that's, that's what Josh was like. Then come with that first. Just there. One, two, one, two, three, four. Not blowing my own trumpet, but I'll know if they're going to be half decent one, two, the first three. time I take them on the pads. Three. I was windmilling. First three. 30 seconds, I was blowing. Oh, it was tough. I couldn't even skip combinations. I didn't have anything. Nice and loose. And Josh was always, can we do pads? Can we, when am I going to do pads? Can I do pads? And he was always pestering, and that's a good thing. Because that's why he learned. He was like a sponge. He was like, I want to I wanna learn, I want to do this. He was always, when am I going to spar? When am I going to spar? When am I going to do this? As the months went on, two months, four months, six months, I started noticing improvements in, uh, in my skipping, within my sparring sessions. Guys that would, you know, run rings around me in the ring, I started running rings around them. When Josh first came to me, I had a Slovakian in the gym. And I used to, Josh used to box, spar him. And this Slovakian used to just do what he wanted with Josh. And a year later, I took Josh to spar him. And he went, he went, he went about a minute and a half and we had to stop the bout because he was smashed up. I used to come home with trophies, sit down and watch my fights back. And I was doing something positive for once. Something that I could see a future in. I was winning, I was giving it my best and I was getting the results. You know, I feel, I feel I'm made for this sport. A lot of the guys in the gyms have been here since 11, 9, so on and so forth, trying to make their way up to the top. And I come in at 18 and had, and had a lot of luck on my side with a bit of hard work. He won the under 10 novices, that was his first title. And we went straight in the ABAs. He won the ABAs at his first attempt. The second year, he went in it. Ben was going in the ABAs. I got the heavyweight and I got the super heavyweight in the final. Uh, and I don't think that's been done very often, having the heavyweight and super heavyweight champion of the ABAs. He was obviously brought in for an assessment, which tends to happen if you reach the ABA final in, in the English ABA. His amateur club had done a fantastic job to get him to GB, and we was fortunate in a way that we had the opportunity to develop a talent such as him, and um, we took our time and, and we did it bit by bit. I'd now conquered the amateur division uh, in England. I knew I was number one in England. So now, becoming a GB fighter, short-term goal is to become number one in Great Britain. So everything the coaches told me, I had to listen to. I've always been tall, but my idol at the time, and probably still is, is Mike Tyson, who's a short guy, 5'11", stocky. I'm a bit taller, thinner, ranger. I used to think I was Mike Tyson and box short, tucked up. And they told me that's not the way you're gonna win these fights as an amateur. You need a hit and don't get hit type of boxing style. So they completely changed me and um, put me in with experienced fighters, sparring-wise. I got hit hard, you know, I bounced back, I trained, I learnt in the gym, which is the best place to do it, which prepared me for, for international duty. We took him out to Azerbaijan, it was, it was an Olympic qualifying event, it was a very tough one, it was out there for the best part of three weeks in Azerbaijan. I took myself to places I'd never been, I started working on things that I neglected before and I went to the World Championships in full effect as a complete underdog but ready to give my best and compete with the best in the world. 
and I don't think they knew too much about him. He was a revelation out there. He boxed six times in just under two weeks. Ken really, knowing that he was a reigning Olympic champion, world champion, he's someone I actually looked up to as an amateur. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a it, it was a brilliant contest. It was very very close all the way. But Josh Josh does does enough against him and knows how to beat him. To compete with him and beat him gave me a real boost of confidence to go on and do well throughout the World Championships. He was the star of the show, albeit he ended up with the silver medal out there. It was a contentious silver medal as well. There were many that said that he deserved the decision over in Baku. Uh, we had someone ringside for Boxing News and, and he thought Joshua deserved the decision. If I'm honest, you know, did we know he was going to reach the final in, in Azerbaijan at the Wells and, and arguably do enough to win the final? We felt he'd done enough. Um, possibly not. The most important thing for Joshua was that he proved that he could hang with the top amateurs uh, after so few amateur fights and, and that really by, by proving it there over in Baku it got everyone excited about the, the London Olympic Games. I set my ambitions high because of what I'd done previously in the World Championships. I'd boxed against some really really strong contenders. I'd had about at this time about 38 fights within three years so I knew experience-wise it's going to be tough, but I knew I'd gained a lot of confidence from competing at the world. I thought for him to be a relative novice and to win the Olympic Games was unbelievable, really, and um, I thought he earned it, I thought he deserved it. But there were also critics out there who thought that Joshua lost at least two of the fights that he won, um, and he was the benefit of, of generous scoring. Uh, either way, there wasn't much in his fights against the top Cuban and the best fighters out there. I didn't really want to go to the final, but I had to go to support him. I think no amount of pressure people expect from me can outweigh the amount of pressure I put on myself. So, um, you know, I already wanted to go out and do the country proud regardless, and uh, I went out and I'd done the job for them. I watched it, and that was the longest nine minutes of my life. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I sat there with paper over my face and all I could hear was just the you know bells going ding dong and that was it every three minutes. I'm in the Olympic final and I said to myself this is the last fight I'm going to have probably as an amateur potentially if I decide to turn professional. Why not put everything on the line? I thought let me still box, keep it clever but back up Roberto Camarelli and give him something that he's never had before. The judges have said we've seen it as a draw. So what we have in amateur boxing is a count back. The judges scored in level at 18 points apiece. I won the fight by two clean punches and I become super heavyweight Olympic gold medalist of 2012. After the, you know, the game was over, the people who sat next to me didn't know who I was and they went, oh, the blue corner won. And I went, did they? Oh, that's my son, that's my son. I was just so happy. I was so happy for him. And they went, oh, yes, no wonder you couldn't watch it. I watched all the fights on TV, taking every punch with him and that. There was tears at the end of it. It's an emotional time for the club and everyone who was, who was involved with him, really. It's a massive achievement. I mean, you've got to take into account that the pressure was on, you know, for a London fighter to be boxing in the London Olympics. There's a level of expectation that the visiting fighters didn't have. And so Joshua didn't just have to cope with the opponents, but he had to deal with the pressure. And he did marvellously well to, to do what he did. What a fantastic spectacle to see him getting his hand raised on the podium, Olympic champion. Just brilliant memories. As time goes on, I really look back and I think, what an achievement for someone to pick up boxing gloves and then four years later be an Olympic champion. It, it, I'm not going to say it diminishes the achievements of anyone else, but it makes it look easy, and it's not. It's certainly not. Uh, there's so many different strands to being a good fighter, psychologically, physically, uh, emotionally and mentally. Uh, you need to tick an awful lot of boxes to have come as far as Anthony Joshua has. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Trinity House here for uh, a very special day for Anthony Joshua, for us and for British boxing. When Anthony Joshua won the gold medal, I thought to myself, oh, no. Joshua was the hottest prospect coming out of 2012. 
I'm the champ. What's next? I would have felt we were a strong favourite to get him before the gold medal, but once that comes in, the amount of people that are on your shoulder telling you this, millions of experts all of a sudden emerge out of the woodwork. Through the history of boxing, the gold medal has always been the gravy train. Uh, that's the one that uh, Olympic fighters or amateurs strive for because that gives them a foot in the door to a really lucrative pro career. We finally got our man, Anthony Joshua, has turned professional. I felt very confident that we were the right choice for Anthony Joshua, but my tactics aren't to turn up and sleep out on someone's doorstep and try and get into his family and his uncle and, you know, Mine is, I believe in what we can do for you. And the first meeting I had with him went very, very well. And then, the, you know, there was silence. It was interesting that Joshua took so long to make up his mind. Uh, there was a time where I think you could argue that he lost some momentum by him taking so long to make up his decision. Should I stay on as an amateur and gain valuable experience and keep on honing my skills under the radar? I believe we've got a heavyweight in this country that we can get very, very excited about. I went around, I searched high and low, I travelled to different countries, met different people. Um, thank you all for coming down on uh, my first press conference, uh, becoming a professional boxer now. 11 months after, which is a huge period of time. Obviously what he needed to do was turn pro and have peace of mind that he had made the right call. Uh, so you have to give him credit for not rushing into anything. This is just the beginning. It's going to be a very, very tough road. But I'm so determined and I know what I've got to do to make my dreams come true. You know, it was a real coup for us and, and something I was very pleased with and proud of when we got his signature. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the waiting is over. That whole experience is unbelievable. Can't pay the end seize the day. He's coming off the back of that Olympic gold medal. The crowd was overwhelming. Well, here he is at last, 14 months on from Olympic gold and super heavyweight. Here he is, the great new hope of British boxing. He was just relaxed, like he weren't even going to have a fight. I can't lie, I was nervous. But that's nervous to perform to my best. You know, I'd been out of the ring for a while. I was in with an 8 and 0. Emmanuel Leo, quite a, a late choice because it was very difficult to get a, a, an opponent for Anthony Joshua. People were saying, Are you sure about this? You know, have you looked at him? I said, Yeah. And you know, the trainers looked at him, and, but it was one of them where this could go horribly wrong. You know, whatever way you look at it, his opponent was 8-0. and oh. Whether he beat eight bums or not, he still got in there and beat eight guys. He was having from his first ever professional fight. Well, this is where the journey begins, isn't it? Do we have another Lennox Lewis on our hands? Do we have another Ollie Harrison on our hands? Or do we have something in between? Second zone. Let's get it on. Let's pick up where we left off in, in my winning ways. Oh, and he's got him. Big solid right hand there, has shaken the Italian. And he comes in with that unbeaten record of his. Well, he's brave, but he is just getting blitzed here. He cannot stop these right hands, and he's going to get hurt pretty soon if he's not careful. There's an argument to stop this already. It demolished him in a round because Leo really came to fight, you know, and it was a cracking knockout as well. What is keeping Leo up? He is getting tattooed here, and he has to go, and it's over. That's what the fuss is about. That's the kind of start you want when you're taking your first step in the pro game. He just wiped the geezer out as well. He's a complete different class, and I think just on that one show in there, you can see the potential of what Anthony Joshua could become. It's just the start, though, do you know what I mean? I don't want to get carried away. It's just the beginning, but we can build on that. But you believe you can go all the way, don't you? We're going to do six frees. 
We've got three minutes interval, one minute rest, time six. It's a bit different to, to doing your normal um, 45 minute run in the morning. That's more stamina, this is more get to your heart, get your heart working straight away. And it's about how quick you recover in the minute. And then you've got to go back again. Last break. Push it. What are you saying, Baba? You all right? You're boxing. You're good. I'm going to do this swim now. But sometimes I think I put myself through too much. This is what it's about, just giving it your best. I go into that gym and I just give it my best. And if I keep on doing that, whatever happens, I'm always going to, I'm always going to get to the, to the top. Mary, Mary, Mary. How are you? What's going down? Nothing. How you doing? You You new? Yes, I am. What's your name? Natalia. Natalia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Anthony, what I would like, please, Mary, to start. What are you saying, bro? You all right, yeah? I would like, please, the New Yorker and then uh, extra salmon. Of course. Would you be able to cut this avocado up for me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I do that. And then also, can I get um, ginger? Honey, lemon, and ginger. Right, I want you to use that honey, that lemon. Use that lemon. What's so special? Because I'm trying to do, I'm trying to eat organically, right? Okay. So that's why I went to the organic shop and I just bought some stuff. So <laughs> as a family. Yeah, yeah, big and bold. I want it to come from your heart, Anthony, please. Yes, Uncle Jack. Anyway. I just see. I've been shame without you. Yeah. Um, I'm missing What's you, Jack. What's your name? Thank you. To Caroline, thank you for being you. Thank you for being beautiful inside and out. Thank you for turning dull days into fun with your smile. Kindest regards, lots of love from Anthony Joshua. Who's he? Yeah, that, that is nice. Oh, it's my boy. He's a poet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a poet. <laughs> He's still a bit, isn't he? Yeah. He's working it today. <laughs> He's working it you. today. He says them goji berries, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're kicking it. <laughs> He's going soft. It's them goji he berries. It's coconut juice. <laughs> I know I'm going to get moved up the ranks pretty fast. So instead of being hit with a surprise, I'd rather be ready for my opportunity. Don't wait for your opportunity. Make sure you're ready for when the opportunity comes. So I just try and stay on top of my game. I remembered when Anthony and his sister used to kind of um, play fight and all that. And I remembered her saying that, Mom, you know, can you tell him to stop? Because he doesn't know the power of his own strength. And he's gone. Oh, no, no. That right hand. I landed a cracking right hand. It just split his head open. He's all over the place here. And that's it. The towel comes in. I love hurting people in the ring. I don't put myself through excruciating pain day in, day out, three times a day to get in the ring and be dominated. This is naturally so heavy handed. It's very difficult to match Anthony unless there's huge amounts of money involved. Hey, Teddy Hearn, who's next? I don't know, do you know anyone? And 
Anthony Joshua hears the cries of easy, easy, and they are loving him here. Can he punch, like people say? And I say, no, you don't listen to the hype, you know. Much more of a technical boxer. Another clinical, brutal performance from Anthony Joshua. I think it's a bit of a natural thing. I think I get that from my dad. My dad's, my dad's a fighter. Um, I've heard some stories about my dad. You know, he's a real warrior. I am my parents. I don't think we're ever going to be without opponents, but again, it comes down to who is going to want to get hit by Anthony Joshua. And not just get hit by him, but get hit with him by, at speed. <laughs> no one's ruining the AJ party. It's just begun. What you put in is what you get out. How you approach work is what's going to determine the outcome of your of the final product. Oh, he's a fantastic attitude. You know, he's a dream to train, really. So sell yourself down, get your foot into place, and then move your head neck side to side, and then get your jab yeah. off. Uh, Obviously, okay. you're in distance to get it as well with the guy's jab, yeah? yeah? So that's when your head movement starts coming into play. So say, like, look, let me show you something, right? Yeah. So obviously when you're like when you're like this, Josh, you don't yeah. want to be bowed up right. You come into distance like that, moving your neck. Bow, 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 see what I mean? Using your jab from there. So you're looking for the slips anyway. Yeah. You slip, slip, connect, slip and connect, connect that plum. See what I'm saying? Uh. So you slip the shot, <laughs> react to the shot. Same as blocking it. Block react. Slip react. react. Slip react react react. See what I mean? So you get in, he's developing sort of really well, you know, he's an intelligent young man. You know, his brain's like a sponge, he takes it in and he thinks about it. Well, I win. Boom, boom. Roll at least, don't come out straight up. Exactly, that's exactly it. Don't come out straight, yeah. head up in the air. You gotta move your head I'm to get, that, move your head before your feet to get back out again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you're in there, and you're throwing like this, look, they're obviously gonna throw back. What you don't wanna do is pull out like that. And then one you know what I mean? And cop for one. Start at the look. beginning. I'm early days. The first three years as a professional is all about learning the business, learning the game, and learning about myself and where I'm at as a professional. When you find your left hook, Josh, yeah, don't make it an arm shot like that, yeah? Yeah. You tilt that a little bit. So say I'm going to throw the body shot there, look. Tilt, uh, and then boom. come back. Boom. Same as the head shot as well, look. Tilt, there, yeah. yeah. A little, boom, boom, boom. That's it, boom, boom. boom. and then, boom, boom. Beautiful. The same as if you go to block it and react to it. Instead of catching it there like that, yeah, tilt, tilt your shoulder with it, look. Yeah, and then Ooh. come back with your own, look. <clears throat> Beautiful. I could You've be this big, I could be the world's strongest man, but if I don't believe it, if I don't have the, the ambition to wake up in the morning and train and, and, and compliment what I've already been blessed with, I'm never going to be able to, to do anything with what I've been blessed with. What I'm going to do, jab into there, Josh. I'm going to throw my punch first. Yeah. You react to it, yeah? Is it going to be one hook? One hook I'm going to throw. So all you need to do is turn a little bit like that, right? Ready? Jab. Wait for me to throw the hook though, yeah? Ready? Wait for me. And again, turn that on the second one. After I jab and I block. You can step, yeah. Ready? Block, step. Beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. But just catch it first. Forget the jab a minute, ready? Ready? And again, good, and again. Beautiful, and again. See? He is a perfectionist, and I think if you want to be a, a great fighter, you have to be a perfectionist. He's picking out little points because he yeah. wants to get better and he wants to push himself yeah. on. And what that does, you, it covers your chin there, right? It frees this hand up to punch as well, so watch, ready? Yeah? 
Yeah. You've seen Mayweather do it, haven't you? Yeah. If you watch the old fighters, like in the 1950s fighters, like you watch Archie Moore, and you, they do the shoulder rolls, you know what I mean? They do it back then as well? Yeah, they, they do all that. If you watch good fighters, Emil Griffith, them sort of fighters, Archie Moore, and they do the shoulder roll, see? Ah! Boom, there you go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and it frees up their hands as well, and also covers your body, see what I mean? So, look, bang. See? So when you do it, you've got to nestle your chin into that shoulder when you do it, Josh. Ready? Slip, slip, shoulder. There you go. Sit under, sit under. Crease at the knee, and I'm still in that position, right in front of you. Yeah. See and what you I'm saying? Slip, slip, block, block. Sit, sit. See what I'm saying? Yeah? Slip, slip. Sit. Right in front of me again. Yeah? Barton versus Avengers, it's going to be lively. It's a good turnout. Yeah. Ratio, what would you say? If there's, there's, let's say there's 40 people here, there's 30 girls, that's 10 that's, guys. Yeah, <laughs> crazy that. So you think a game of paintball in, you don't think it's a man's sport, <laughs> women are coming down to support it as well, yeah. we come down to have a good time, so some, some, some target practice for us. <laughs> It's good to take your mind off of things for sure, and this stuff like this, like go karting, paintballing, skydiving, all them type of things, is what I enjoy doing. Good experiences. Oh, I want free entry, boys. Yes. That is tired. Boys! Boys! I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I'm usually getting shot in the head, but these body shots with these paintballs are going to be something else, man. There's painful stuff out there on the battlefield. I'm going to be probably ducking low, <laughs> hiding half of the time, begging people don't, not to shoot me. It's going to be lively. I'm just looking forward to getting out there and letting off my rounds. Go, 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 go! I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. Hold it down, hold it down. Took a few headshots early on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> took, took one or two headshots early on. Um, me and my boy Dabs here went in there. I had his back, he had my back. We went in, took a few men out, but then I got shot up by one of these guys in their base, so it was good though. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got shot in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, it's not easy. It's not easy, I'm like. I was so happy when I bought this, you know. I think it jammed in it. Bro, my thing jammed, I got shot in the mouth. I got shot in the mouth, my thing jammed. All of us together, bro. I'm so thankful for this little extra bit. It was a way to pull it. Look at it. I was shook. I was like, my, if that would hit my face. I don't know, I wouldn't have felt anything like that. All these are my boys, known them for a long time. No matter who it is, even if I met people, um, stuff like this brings everyone together and you'll just bond and just get along. And you never know, you can make some lifetime friends out of these type of events. You left me, bro. I was shot. I, was shot. I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, I'm going to the left. I'm going to the left. I'm there, I'm looking. I can't see no one. I got shot in the face. Yeah, you got shot in the face. My cousins from Watford, my boys from London, a couple of girls from the area. Leon knows all the girls. <laughs> I'm just here with him enjoying it. <laughs> Long time. I've not seen you in ages. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Little baby? Yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. wide awake. Hello. Good to see you, yeah? Say hello, darling. Say hello, darling. It's 
Be safe. Be safe. <laughs> Missing me already, isn't she? <laughs> Take care. I'll never forget where I've come from. I've got a lot of respect for these guys and they've got a lot of respect for me. And that's just how we were all brought up. <laughs> Back to the ends. Back to the manor. You know what I mean? He wants a picture of us. Yeah, of course. It's your birthday. How do you know? Happy birthday, bro. I want to say hello, I don't know. Uh, Kathy, what's going on? You all right? Yeah, all Long cool. Time. I'm checking you for you. You okay? So I stretched you again, haven't I? <laughs> uh, no, keep on growing. Yeah, you've I'm been on Garth's news, haven't you, again? Yeah, some good stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. For the positive, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see you, see. Did you get it? Yeah? <laughs> you all right? How you doing? You all good? <laughs> I'm certainly you all right, yeah? They were so <laughs> Right. Cheers. Right, cheers, mate. Good see to see you, yeah? Take care, see you soon. Happy birthday as well. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, just want to say hello, yeah. mate, to be honest with nice you, mate. It's a pleasure. Good. I didn't realize how tall you were. <laughs> what I say TV makes you look bigger? <laughs> You're huge. Oh, wrong one. Sorry, mate. Thank you, mate. You're an no absolute legend. Thank you it. very much. Look after yourself, yourself, yeah? Thank you, mate. All right, sweet. <laughs> Still looking fresh, Vlad. What you saying? How you been? Same old, bro. <laughs> Look at the size of you, bro. You've been gymming as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is the ringleader. <laughs> Nick was the ringleader. <laughs> Long time. He's so big. He's got a gorgeous bum, you know. I'm so, you know what I mean? Back to the end, Vlad. Oh. The shop. <laughs> <laughs> this was a spot, isn't it? Yeah, spot, is this, this is, is where it, we used to hang out and be naughty. <laughs> is this still... weren't good. <laughs> I can tell you that. Oh, you done well? Not yet. No, you have done well. Nah, not yet. Yeah, yeah. It's early doors, though. Is it? Yeah, there's still a lot more to do. A lot more to do. Oh, Femi, Beverly wants to kiss you. What's happening, Bev? You all right? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. Bev, Bev, you should have grabbed this bum boy. It's not that very <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You used to have a rotty as well, innit? Yeah, you remember it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yours, I've got, yeah oh, jumped he's... over my fence, remember? That's what I said. Come off my KX and I was like, Femi, go and open my back gate, jump over my back. What was big? Yeah, we, we must have gone out early morning on his motorbike. Seven in the morning, innit? And then he must have fallen off badly, Dude, smashed his head. Running. I've had to run back to yours. What did I have to get for you again? Yeah, jump over and open the fence, I'll get the bike. So you get the bike, bike in, 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 and then he's, yeah, because he can't, he didn't yeah. want his dad to know. How old was he then, about? Yeah, 14. He was in year six, year five, yeah. year seven, isn't it? And then uh, he's got this um, big rock while about, whoa, 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 trying to bite me. I've got a CR250 now. Is it? Yeah, and then a Demon, one, a Demon 160. Got a little pit bike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. How's your grand then, everyone? Yeah, he's all right, man. He's probably yeah. pop now, yeah. Oh man, everyone good? Yeah, 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 everyone's good. Man. Yeah, so, anyway. There we go. You can't go in the boozer, dear. Why? Right. Can I have an orange juice now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that, dear? <laughs> You're right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, mate? You alright? What? Good to see you. How you doing? Hey, oh. How you doing? <laughs> no, I'm good, mate. You, you alright, yeah? <laughs> It's been a long time, isn't it? Yes, boy. I know, I know. Trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, Want a drink? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I don't want no drinks. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Good boy, good boy. Good, good to see you, yeah? yeah? Take care. You want to go, son? And you too, mate. Right? Take care, yeah? Bless you, yeah. Knock him out, lipstick. Trust me, I will. <laughs> Not bad, okay, yeah, yeah. To be able to come back and just still get that same love and that respect and I can go in the pub like it's nothing, that's what it's about. That's why staying humble is so important and not forgetting your roots. Going up is one thing, but you'll meet all the people that you disrespected or you respected on your way back down. So keep it humble, keep it balanced, whether you're going up or whether you're coming down. Jim, people from my part of the world don't usually get welcomes like that in Glasgow. This guy has got a Glasgow crowd eating out of the palm of his hand. They love him already. He's down to earth, he's likeable, and he's terrific to watch. I don't think the proclaimers is NC's kind of music, and he sort of looked at me as if to say, you know, are you sure about this? And I wasn't 
totally sure if I can be honest. But the reception, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. An English fighter to go to Scotland and get a reception like that, it was, it was very, very special. And he'll never forget that. I've had many, many receptions before in, uh, in boxing, but I've never had anything like this in Glasgow, and I think... <laughs> yeah. I think Anthony is the biggest potential crossover superstar. I believe he can change the face of boxing, and I think that he can grow the sport to levels that no one has ever seen before. Anthony Joshua is the kind of person you can look at and say, I want to be like him and you need role models to grow any sport. And we may just have a chance with Anthony to do so. I could have been a stereotype, a young kid getting in trouble, up to mischief, but I've been honored a gold post box, an MBE by the Queen. It just shows that you can achieve anything and you can really change your life. I just feel privileged and I feel honored to be involved in boxing. Boxing did save him. He made a mistake and um, thank God that he was given an opportunity. He could have gone the other way. We were all very shocked about what had happened and um, we're just grateful that he's made good use of it and doing well with it. And I hope that other young people can see that as well and feel inspired about what he's doing. It has changed my life. So from where I began to what I've achieved now, there's nothing I can say that is negative about my journey. And one thing I love to share with people is my struggles and the toughness of the sport, the toughness of life and uh, getting over any obstacles because it's not always about your success. Throughout every dark night, there's a bright day. And that's how I see boxing and that's how I see my career so far. He's very passionate about what the sport of boxing did for his life. You know, any young kid who needs direction in his life should look at Anthony Joshua. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olympic gold medalist Anthony Joshua. And Wembley was all about the occasion for Joshua, it was about the platform as well. It's always good for the experience of a fighter coming through to say that they've boxed on a big bill. <laughs> I think there was probably about 30,000 people in the, in the arena when he opened up the show, which is more than most uh, fighters at his level will have fought in front of. And oh, that right hand uppercut, bang! If you get tagged like that, you're in desperate trouble, and he's done. One big right hand, good night. A lot of people are talking about him at the moment. It's important for him to be a part of that show. And, um, you know, I think he'll be headlining Wembley himself one day. Absolutely no question about that. 100%. I don't like to jinx anything, but if I work hard, I keep on performing. Other heavyweights around Great Britain are doing well, which I really spare them on to do. We can create some great rivalries and put on some great shows for the rest of the boxing fraternity. It only lasted 83 seconds. Do you need a step up in class now? Well, I feel... That I could step up. Experience wise, um, I haven't gone past two rounds as a pro yet, so experience is really what I need. One of the things that he really needs to get under his belt is rounds, and then as the rounds progress, he's going to have to get opposition that fire back at him. Then he's going to have to have different experiences where he's cut, maybe where he's flawed, where he comes back to win through adversity. All of that helps the making of a champion, and some of that you don't get until 20, 25 fights down the line. But with someone who's so young, there's absolutely no rush with him, so he can learn his trade as he goes along. It's just that whether he will want to be kept back that long or the, or the public will be patient enough to see him be kept back that long. We're not even remotely started yet on this journey. Stay in the gym, stay hungry, stay focused, continue winning, then I'm going to get the British title and I'm going to win that in Watford where I was born and raised. But even when we get to British title, the journey's not started. Even when we get to European title, the journey's not started. You know, if Anthony Joshua doesn't become a, the heavyweight champion of the world, then I believe no one's done their job right. When you look through the, the history of heavyweight champions, generally they've, they've bookmarked their eras. And someone like Anthony Joshua, 2012 super heavyweight gold medalist, has the potential to do that with this era. 
And I don't just want him to win the heavyweight championship of the world. I want him to defend it and unify and be one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. I think um, he has all the talent in the world and he has all the potential. And I think it's a matter of time with, with Anthony Joshua before he gets to the top. He wants to learn and he wants to develop and, and he doesn't really have time for you know, taking it easy. And I, like the rest of the, the, the nation, will, will want to be, get behind him and, and see him go on and, and achieve his goals. Every now and again you'll tell him just how big he can be or the levels that I feel he can go to. But it doesn't go to his head and it just inspires him to get better and better. This is my career and I'll never forget the days when no one had an interest in what I was doing. And that's led me to now. Oh, I think he's a massive talent. I believe that he's the next best heavyweight you know, of the generation, I really do. If I keep on heading in the same route that I started off at, I'll always get to the final destination, and that is to mega fights. That is the championship level. And that is competing with people that could supposedly beat me. And that's what people want. And he won't be there to nick fights. He'll be there to try and knock people out, and that's what makes him exciting. This is his one opportunity, and um, you either make use of it, or, or you let it go. And I know that he's very hungry to do well. He's making those sacrifices.